a shaft as shown in figure is subjected to a bending load of 3 kilo newton pure torque of 1000 newton meter and an axial pulling of 15 kilo newton calculate the maximum stress at a so we have to calculate the maximum stress at this point okay so from the problem it is clear that three stresses are acting in this shaft so one is the axial stress it is because of this 15 kilo newton load and a torque 1000 newton meter is acting then finally a bending load it is 3 kilo newton is acting okay so this is a cantilever beam and this cantilever beam is subjected to both axial bending as well as torsion so this is a special case problem so in this problem we have to combinedly use the case 1 as well as case 2 so first we will write the given data the shaft diameter is 50 mm so d is equal to 50 mm the load axial load p is 15 kilo newton so it is 15 into 10 power 3 newton then the torque is 1000 newton meter i am going to convert it into newton mm so it is 1000 into 10 power 3 newton mm the length of the shaft is 250 mm and the load that is transverse load is 3 kilo newton so it is 3 into 10 power 3 newton okay so we'll calculate the stresses one by one so first we'll start from axial stress so the stress is acting like this okay so it is a tensile load and we know that the stress equation for axial stress is sigma a is equal to p divided by a the p is 15 kilo newton we have converted into 15 in newton that is 15 into 10 power 3 newton then the area okay so in this problem the cross section area is a circular one and we know that for a circular cross section the area is pi by 4 d square here the diameter is 50 mm so it is pi into 50 square divided by 4 if you solve this equation you will get sigma a is equal to 7.64 newton per mm square so this is the axial stress now the second one is a bending stress so in this case consider the 3 kilo newton force that is acting at the end point okay and we know that the equation for calculating the bending stress for a circular cross section is sigma b is equal to 32 m divided by pi d cube so here one thing is very important that in the previous problem the beam is a simply supported beam but here the beam is supported at one end and it is left free at the other end which means the beam is a cantilever beam and we know that the formula for calculating the bending moment for a cantilever beam is load into perpendicular distance the load is 3 into 10 power 3 and the perpendicular distance is 250 mm here you can see that the load is acting here and it has a perpendicular distance of 250 mm so by substituting this we will get a bending moment of 750 into this is actually 10 power 3 newton mm okay so we have calculated the bending moment we know the diameter you can substitute in this equation it is 32 into 750 into 10 cube divided by pi d cube so we will get sigma b is equal to 61.1 newton per mm square so this is the bending stress so we have calculated the axial stress then bending stress so finally we will move into the shear stress we know the equation for calculating shear stress is tau is equal to 16 t divided by pi d cube so this is for a circular cross section and the important thing is in this problem the torque is directly given so we don't need to calculate the torque from the power the torque is directly given so we can directly substitute it so we have converted the t is equal to 1000 into 10 power 3 newton mm so i'm going to substitute the t value and the diameter value so if you solve this equation finally you will get tau s is equal to 40.74 newton per mm square the important one is the torque is directly given so the power is not given in the previous problem the power and speed is given so from that we have calculated the torque here the torque is directly given so you can directly substitute the torque value and find out the shear stress value so now we have calculated the axial stress bending stress and shear stress the last part is we have to combine all these three okay so this is a very very important part 
so first consider the both normal stresses that is consider axial and bending and we have to calculate the stress acting at point a we know that the normal stress that is the resultant stress for axial and bending stress is uh, sigma a plus or minus sigma b okay so plus or minus is there now the important point is whether we are going to use plus or minus so that is very important so for that you have to look into the diagram very clearly so consider the axial load the 15 kilo newton load so because of this 15 kilo newton load there will be a tensile load acting at the point a also a tensile load at point b okay so both the sides are subjected to tensile load now coming to the bending 3 kilo newton so because of this 3 kilo newton the shaft will bend like this which means this side is subjected to tensile load and this side is subjected to compressive load okay so this is very important when the shaft is bending the upside is subjected to tensile and the lower part is subjected to compressive load okay so now uh, look into this uh, section a so here both the stresses are tensile in nature and here one is tensile and the another one is compressive so when both the stresses are in uh, same that is uh, axial tension or axial compression then there will be the maximum stress acting so here both the stresses are tensile so the maximum stress will be acting at the point a and the minimum stress will be acting at point b so the objective in this problem is to find the stress acting at point a so we have to use plus here okay so this is very important and this is because of the maximum stress is acting at point a suppose if you want to calculate the stress acting at point b then you have to use minus because the minimum stress is going to act here okay so here in this problem i have used plus because maximum stress is acting here so substitute sigma a and sigma b and we can get the resultant of the normal stress that is 68.74 newton per mm square now i have a normal stress and i have a shear stress now i have to use the principal stress equation to find the resultant so if you have both normal stresses then you can add or uh, you can calculate the difference to find the normal resultant stress when you have a normal stress and a shear stress then we have to go for the shear stress equation i mean the maximum principal stress equation so in this equation it is 1 by 2 in the place of sigma a or sigma b we can substitute the sigma n that is calculated from the previous step okay so it is 1 by 2 68.74 plus root of 68.74 plus 4 into 40.74 the whole square so here i have used plus because in the problem they have clearly asked that calculate the maximum stress okay so that is why i have used plus so if you solve this equation finally you will get the maximum shear stress that is 87.67 newton per mm square further the shear stress can be calculated by this equation you can substitute the normal stress and the shear stress calculated so you will get the maximum shear stress is equal to 53.3 newton per mm square okay so this is all about the problem the important thing is we have three stresses axial bending and torsion so first you have to calculate the resultant stress for axial and bending then by combining this resultant with the shear stress you have to calculate the maximum principal stress and maximum shear stress one more thing is very important you have to find the maximum stress and minimum stress location so in this drawing the maximum stress is acting at point a and the minimum stress is acting at point b since we are calculating the stress at point a we have to use plus symbol in between the axial and bending stresses